Hey everybody, thank you for joining us this Wednesday morning, whether you're watching a recording or here live. We have Jane Galena, aka Airplane Jane, who's a partner and user of TrendSpider, and we were lucky enough to go visit her event this June, which was a lot of fun. And she's the founder of cjanetrade.com. So thank you so much for having us, Jane, today, or thank you for being on our show today, Jane. Thank you, Jake. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, um, I'm going to do our, our uh, typical uh, kind of disclaimer. First, nothing that we're going to talk about today is a buy or sell signal, uh, buy or sell advice. What we're doing is going over a few different ways that you can utilize the TrendSpider platform and really just sharing some of Jane's expertise um, on some of the stocks that she's looking at and why she's looking at them. So um, we will be using TrendSpider. So definitely make sure you check out some of the features that we will be utilizing, like the raindrops, the alerts, uh, I'll really be touching on that, as well as the anchored VWAP. Uh, that's something that I've really been using a lot more lately, especially with the blue raindrops. So for those who have not heard about TrendSpider or seen much of our content or our features that we have to offer, uh, we are a charting platform that aims to make the process of technical analysis as efficient as possible by automating some of the grunt work and also creating ways where you can create different logic and back test and create alerts on that without necessarily having to code anything in. So this is very much for professional traders, but also retail traders who may not have that experience having to code a different in a different language like PineScript or Python. We give you the visual ability to do that. Um, so the way we do this and some of the problems that we aim to solve are bias and curve fitting, hand-drawn inconsistencies, FOMO. It's very easy to uh, really just uh, feed into FOMO, especially if you're on social media a lot and you see something's going up and everyone's making money. Um, that generally doesn't work out great. Um, timing and efficiencies, missing key reversals. A lot of people have full-time jobs. They can't stare at the screen all day. And that's something that we aim to solve through our alert system, as well as impatience, you know, just waiting for those those specific rules to come to you um, that you've created rather than just going and buying something or shorting something because that, that generally is a way consistent and will end up. Oops. Hi there, everyone. Well, TrendSpider is an amazing tool. Um, you know, I first met up with Dan and Jake Sorry, back okay. last year. I know you fell off there, Jake. Uh, um, <laughs> so it's really cool to see the evolution and how uh, they have really taken feedback from the trading community and implemented it with the software so that it's just getting better and better every single month. It's now turned into an amazing product. And the raindrops, uh, the raindrop candlesticks, which for some reason I kept calling teardrop, but it's not teardrop, it's a raindrop. Um, it's very, very cool the way that they have created it to have the VWAP volume in the first half and the second half of the candle, which Jake is gonna touch upon more once it gets back up and running. Um, and it is such amazing software to be able to use and to especially test out the beta version as all these updates roll out. Um, and to have the ability to have the trends pre-drawn for you if you are a newer trader and you're not used to drawing the trend lines yourself. Are you there, Jake? I, can you hear me? OK, so, um, you know, when you start to overanalyze a chart, it can get you to not even enter the trade so that you might have paralysis by analysis. And TrendSpider really helps to shorten that analysis time 
because you have the algos that are going to go ahead and draw those trend lines for you. So you are able to go ahead and simply analyze instead of just spending time drawing and drawing and drawing. And you can set the alerts as well based on what you like to see. So hopefully Jake will be getting back here shortly so we can look more at some charts. Let's see, I don't know if I can share my screen. Let me see if I could share my screen too. Hey Jane, can you hear me? I can hear you, Jake, and I don't hear the feedback. Oh, thank goodness. I have no idea what happened there. Um, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, so thank you for uh, taking over there while I tried to figure out what the heck was going on. So um, yeah. we were in the middle of talking about some of the problems that we're aiming to solve. And I'm just going to keep my video off because I have a feeling that may have had something to do with it somehow. Um, so we talked about impatience and using alerts to remove some of that uh, kind of impulsiveness that you can really have, especially when you're just staring at the screen all day and that distractibility and chart fatigue. When you're doing 10 different charts, it's easy to kind of all of a sudden kind of lose uh, track of even what you're doing. So what we're aiming to do is not replace your technical analysis, but really complement what you're doing and making the whole process a more efficient one. Some of the main functions that we aim to solve some of these issues with are the back testing engine, the automated technical analysis platform with trend lines, fib levels, the ability to overlay multiple time frames. Uh, proprietary indicators from industry leaders. That's something I'll be touching on with the Anchor VWAP, which was created by Brian Shannon. Uh, we will be going over a little bit with multi time frame analysis in this uh, webinar as well. Um, and I will be showing how to use the cloud based alerts. Uh, lastly, the innovating ways to visualize volume and price action falls under the raindrops, which I will explain a little bit. Um, before we go into showing you how to anchor the VWAP from these uh, blue raindrops that have really proven to be pretty interesting and uh, find some pretty, uh, seem to be very indicative of volatility possibly to come. So I will hand it off to Jane. And then once she's done going over some of her um, stocks she's looking at, I'll take over, do a quick explanation of raindrops, and then we will do a couple examples how you can anchor the VWAP um, from these particular raindrops. Awesome, Jake. Now, Jake, is it possible for me to share my screen with your actions? Enable screen sharing. Actions. Enable screen sharing. Cool. All right. Can you see it? I can. All right. So we were at, we were talking about you guys here, um, and you guys. I have been watching more for seasonality trade with natural gas that's coming up. Uh, but the ones that were really interesting, I also work with Stephanie Cameraman in the training pit and we trade a lot around the dark pool. And it's really cool to see how the dark pool will also, <clears throat> excuse me, will also sort of follow the trends and everything that you will see that these massive prints start coming in and then you see that price action to follow it. Um, and it's also follows the trend lines that you are, that you already have drawn. So I am on the two screens right here because I have the hour on the bottom screen. Um, so I'm just going to go back to just the single chart here. So Apple has been amazing. Uh, we did have some dark pool prints right over here, right actually at the top of the trend line. And what's really cool is now it's day two. And look at that, we're surging again. And if we can break the top of the candlestick here, it looks like we've got that next trend line up, right, right up here for potential test. So one of my favorite things is combining the dark pools and trend spider with the trends. So it's like, okay, well, not everybody knows about the dark pool. Not everybody knows that it's easy to follow them, but I can go ahead and I could set up an alert on the daily chart, right? So that's one of the favorite tools that I really like, Jake, is the alerts because you can get them, whether you're on your phone, away from your desk, on your desk or in an email. Um, 
And so I'd want to say definitely if it touches it or bounces it or breaks through. I can go ahead and set that up. And I like to do it more on the, actually, we'll put it up for more, more time. I think it'll take a little bit longer to get up there. And what's really cool, too, is that when you start to see the trends that are setting up and they're the major players in the indexes, then you know that that's going to be lifting up the market overall because you're going to say, oh, OK, Apple, well, that's a major player in both the SPY and the NASDAQ. How about Microsoft? Right. So let's check out Microsoft and see, well, what's going on? We had some Microsoft prints. We had over a million shares printed and that's going up right now. It looks like it's in consolidation range right here. It's just sort of, but you can also tell with the multiple time frame analysis with here's the eight EMA and the 15 EMA that it's really respecting that on the weekly chart, it keeps bouncing right off of the 15 EMA, right? So is it going to break down this week at the end of the week? And that's going to really be an indication probably as the biggest holder in NASDAQ that that's going to start to really pull down the market. So seeing how the bigger picture of breaking down on the week with the multiple time frame analysis for the major players in the market will help you get a big picture of the overall market and what's going to happen uh, subsequently. And another amazing one that's looking fairly bullish, like we had Apple looks good. Microsoft looks like it might be coming to a bearish trend if it breaks that 15 EMA is Pfizer. So Pfizer had this rounded bottom, right? How often do we see that? Not that often. And as soon as it broke this trend line here, which also corresponded with massive prints that were built in right here, they were all buying in, it looks like now because the price action has gone up. Now we see it's really gone up. Oh, look, it tested right here. And I'll let you I'll let you uh, go on to the raindrops. I don't I don't want to take your thunder away, Jake, on the raindrops. OK, absolutely. No. Uh, so, yeah, that's a nice, uh, cool example of previous resistance acting. Well, previous. Uh, no, I guess it was always resistance. It looked like uh, there was support, but no. But uh, yeah. yeah, it's just always interesting to see how, you know, not, a trend line doesn't always have to be beautiful. Right. It, it just needs to be mathematically significant. And that's kind of what, what the system's finding here is the ability to find mathematically significant lines. And so you don't have to look for them. And so without having to think much, you know, you're able to see, OK, price actions touching this line. I probably would have never drawn that line. But just because you have a specific kind of criteria that you're using for the system to look for, it does capture that line. And uh, it was definitely an area where we found resistance today. So um, I will go ahead and share my screen and talk a little bit about raindrops and uh, enable screen sharing here. All right, so we are back to the slide deck. Just want to quickly explain what a raindrop is. A raindrop is a volume weighted candle. So um, instead of having, let's see if there's a chat here. Oh. That was me. Okay, uh, so instead of having a an open and a close, you've got a left and a right side view app, which acts as, you know, it looks very similar to a bar, a bar chart. So uh, the difference is instead of this being an open and a close, this is the left VWAP, right VWAP, which stands for the first half of the period and the second half of the period. And you can see these squiggly lines on each side are actually the volume profile painted on the price range. So you can see here during the left part of the day, meaning the first half of the day, most of the volume was focused at the lower part of the day's range. However, during the second half of the day, you can see the price created new highs here from this volume. And we know this created new highs because there's no volume profile on the left hand side. So you can see how the volume kind of started to flow um, to the upside into the second half of the day. And I'll actually be going over an example of that on IWM here shortly, how that kind of works. So um, quickly, the different colors, obviously your uh, bullish raindrop is gonna be green. Your uh, second half of the candle is higher than the first half. Uh, that first half's VWAP. So uh, that's when you've got your green set up and you can see here a lot more volume near the top of the range. Neutral raindrop or a blue raindrop, we also call it just a raindrop doji, uh, is when your first and second half VWAP equal each other or 
are equal to each other within about 2% margin of error there. Bearish is the opposite of bullish. We've got the second half's VWAP lower than the first half, and that's how you get your red raindrop. So a couple examples of how you can utilize these, especially on um, the volume flow side of things. This is an example of IWM on um, Tuesday. So today's Wednesday. It was yesterday. We broke out of this supply area, and I call it a supply area because we had an area here where we had uh, support initially, resistance, resistance, resistance. We barely uh, missed this area here, and then we found uh, a couple more times that we had resistance. So to me, that tells me there was supply above, and that's what was creating this uh, price action to not go higher. However, we finally broke through yesterday. We had a ton of volume focused above the supply area during the second half of the period. So you can see there was no volume near the low of the day during the second half of the day. It was all focused at the top, excuse me. And uh, you can see we have a nice strong continuation up. If we switch that to hollow candles, you can see a nice strong move to the upside. And the thing is, sure, yesterday's candle looked very bullish regarding uh, the open and the close uh, on the hollow candle, but we didn't know if that was on low volume, high volume. Sure, we can, you know, we can turn on the volume bars and see. Um, I'm gonna turn on vortex. You can see on the volume bars, yes, we did have an uptick in volume yesterday. Uh, but what we really want to see is where that volume was flowing and where that was located on the price action. And that's where the raindrop comes in, where you can really tell a lot of that volume into the close yesterday uh, was uh, was at the top of the day's range. And, and so that's, that's a really cool example of how the raindrops can show you that volume flow. Um, another example that I want to go over is Amazon. And this is a different example here um, where we are actually anchoring the VWAP. So this is something I mentioned before. You can essentially come in look for a blue raindrop, the last two blue raindrops that have occurred. And obviously if the price action's right here and you anchor these two VWAPs, it's gonna be a little premature because there's just not a ton of price action yet. But you can see as we anchored the blue raindrops about 10 or 15 days after this, you can see how well the price action respected the second anchor here from the blue raindrop, which was the most previous. We tested once, twice, three times, broke through, and then our next area of resistance happened to be the anchor from the, the second um, that occurred in the middle of July. And so you can see now that the price action is literally just bouncing between these two VWAPs, which is really interesting um, considering that not only has it acted as resistance, but now it's actually acting as support here as well. So um, this is gonna be something to kind of watch and see if this area continues to hold, if price action breaks down through it, um, and the one thing about this, with these blue rain, uh, with the, any of these raindrops, um, let me turn off the volume, wherever that may be. So uh, one thing about these, they are always forming throughout the day. So this may, this raindrop may look like this right now on the daily, but this is constantly forming as new volume and price action come in. So you can see this is the current raindrop and you've taken all of the current market um, time as of today, divided by half, and that's what this raindrop is representing. So as time goes on, this will continue to form and then at the close, you'll you'll see your final raindrop for the day. So it's, it's a really cool way to not only view volume flow, but also use the anchored VWAP from these specific areas to look for where there may be resistance or support. Another example of this is Google. And this would have been a classic uh, case of using the sensitivity alerts here. You can see what I did here was I anchored the VWAP from this blue raindrop, this blue raindrop. And then this is something that Brian Shannon likes to do is anchor the VWAP from a gap up. And so what I did was I anchored all three and you can see how well this acted as resistance. And then finally, when we broke through here, it's now acting as support. And you can see yesterday, we didn't actually test this bottom one. But if we wanted to create an alert here, you could go in and increase the sensitivity, meaning that you're actually going to get an alert that fires within $4.39 of this line. So you're able to then capture that wick from the, the raindrop. 
And so uh, you can choose a different confirmation candle. You can go all the way down to the 10 minute on these, on these raindrops. So anytime the 10 minute candle closes in this purple area, that's when you'll be alerted. You don't have to actually wait for the daily candle to close. I generally am looking for just a touch here. If it's a breakdown, I don't necessarily want to know about it because then it's kind of turning bearish. But for me, um, you know, with, with the sensitivity, I'm able to capture some of that margin of error that I'm not able to, you know, see when I'm staring, when I'm not staring at the screen all day. And even when I am staring at the screen all day, it's still hard to capture that, that exact moment where the wick happens and then you can capture that, that candle. Uh, what I can do here is create, let's say, an, uh, an alert for five days. And so now if we do break down again and test this area, I'll know anytime the purple area is tested on the 10 minute candle. So um, this is something that's really valuable and something that we've really started to um, do a little more research on, especially as we've been working with Brian closer and uh, he's you know, been nice enough to share a lot of his knowledge with us and how we um, how he utilizes them. He just uh, was on a webinar last week talking about how he anchors, uh, but definitely try out anchoring from the blue raindrops. The last two blue raindrops that occur, it's really something that's uh, quite interesting. One more case study on that is United Healthcare. And you can see here, we've got anchors from the last three raindrops, right? Anchor one, anchor two. It took a little time after we anchored these two things to finally become support, but you can see multiple times here where this, this combination of VWAPs acted as beautiful support before we finally broke down. And it's interesting to see that we broke down right after a blue raindrop formed because blue raindrops generally are pretty decent indicators of volatility ahead. So it's not always common to know which way that volatility is going to go. Uh, but in this case, once we started to break down, it was pretty clear that this may be a big move down. Um, so you can see here, we actually anchored the third blue raindrop on United Healthcare uh, from August 15th. And you can see here, it's acted as resistance perfectly once. And then uh, once again here, uh, twice actually, um, yesterday and today, it's, it's still... Um, a little smaller, still acting as resistance. And you can see here that there is a huge move down today. A lot of that volume is not a huge move down, but a lot of that volume is focused at the low of the day rather than the top of the price range, which would be the high of the day. So um, just a really interesting place to anchor from. Um, one of the things Brian always talks about is, you know, anchoring is kind of an art. Wherever you're going to anchor from, you really kind of, it's got to be your own style. And um, for me, I'm like, well, we don't have many blue raindrops and, uh, you know, might as well anchor them from there. And we've really found some pretty cool stuff with that. And uh, I highly recommend trying this out on any uh, stock you'd like. I think Jane mentioned we've got a blue raindrop potentially forming on shop today. Um, nice. After a big move down, possible blue raindrop forming. This doesn't end until uh, this doesn't stop forming till the end of the day. But you can see here, this is a great example where essentially we've got this trend line and I'm just going to kind of draw this roughly. I just connected this point to this point and extended it. And you can see how we've got this blue raindrop right on support here. So this would be an interesting uh, kind of case study on do we get a nice bounce after this blue raindrop formed on support? Um, an example of this happening on a different um, stock, this ETF um, XLF. Back in the day when uh, you know the market was tanking, we had a uh, falling wedge starting to form here. This is on XLF. It's not a perfect one, but it was a pretty uh, solid one. So we had this falling uh, wedge. And you can see same thing, right? We had support here, we had support here, support here, support here. Finally had a blue raindrop and then we moved up. So when blue raindrops are in resistance or support, they can be pretty interesting to look at um, as far as a possible big move to the upside or the downside. However, when you do have that support or resistance, it gives you a little more um, kind of logic to work off at least. So. Uh, that's how you can utilize the blue raindrops. Um, Jane, you have anything else that you want to go over before we uh, kind of uh, send it off for the day? 
Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything that, uh, you know, I really use it for. And I love the addition of the rain jobs because I also like to see where the volume is and the volume weighted average price is amazing too. And Brian's anchored view app, which is incredible. I learned about that a year ago, um, hearing him speak out at the trade ideas summit and it just blew my mind. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And seeing Great. it and having the ability to put it on to a chart too, where you can see all, I mean, the raindrops to me, well, I don't know why people didn't create these earlier because it's just something that it's, it's all about the volume and the price, right? So why not create something like this to indicate it in a candlestick? Yep. And uh, it's, it's really becoming a, really cool use case for the anchored view app and i can't wait to kind of do more research but this is just another example um like i said sometimes when you've got your blue raindrops forming too close to price action it's not going to become that relevant here it's not that relevant right now and if we create it from here you can even see with this blue raindrop it is you know kind of finding support here but um if we do anchor them from the longer term ones you can see here how this general kind of band of anchored view apps did act as resistance, not complete resistance, but if we created that alert around it, we would have been able to capture some of that price action. Um, but the thing is, we finally broke through it, gapped up, touched this perfectly, and this has now been a base for the next move up. So um, it's really cool how you can utilize this. This is really looking at true supply and demand equilibrium prices, and um, we're really happy to uh, have this uh, Anchor VWAP feature and the ability to anchor these from blue raindrops now. So, um, you know, thank you so much, Jane, for jumping on today. I do want to quickly just go over um, a couple things that we have on the roadmap coming up. We do have uh, scanning capabilities, watch list alerts. So, for example, if you want to create a multi-factor alert, i.e. the MACD fast crosses the slow to the upside, you have to create that on one stock right now and then do it for 10 different stocks. You'll have the ability to create a watch list and then immediately put alert me when the MACD fast crosses the MACD slow on any of these 10 stocks in the watch list. So that's going to make a lot of the uh, processes of looking for these things more efficient. Um, the ability to look for different patterns, chart recognition will be coming too. Um, and then in 2020, we're really focusing on new data, the ability to integrate your brokerage data into our platform to actually trade on. And, uh, you know, it's going to become a full um entire kind of from tech from doing your technical analysis to making the trade all in one platform so we're very excited a ton of things still to come a ton of new features that we're still kind of inventing right now and so there's there's a lot of excitement uh, a big thank you for jumping on today this wednesday morning um and thank you for those that signed up to get the recording i know this is kind of a, an interesting time for those that have a full-time job and need to jump on um, other stuff during the day. But this is for your recording, um, uh, you know, whenever you wanna watch it. Big thank you to Jane for being a guest. Jane, thank you so much for jumping on today. Thank you again, Jake. And that's one of the things that I really love about Transpider is you guys are always innovating and expanding and adding new features. I know I've had a lot of followers ask me if there was the broker integration yet. So it's really cool to see that that's coming uh, in 2020 as things Not progress. Right. I know it's tough because each broker has a different API that you have to work with. So I know that that takes a lot of time to, to integrate that. So thank yeah. you guys for the progress. It's, it's, it's going to be a project and a half and I'm not even a developer and it just makes my head hurt thinking about it, but I know it will be solved uh, into next year once we get to that part of the roadmap. And um, again, thank you, Jane. You guys can visit Jane's website, cjanetrade.com. Or you can follow her on Twitter. It's just Airplane C, no, Airplane Jane is your- I changed your it to It's Airplane Jane. <laughs> airplane Jane. That's the ticker, at It's Airplane Jane, if you want to follow her on Twitter. And um, thank you guys so much for listening. If you do want to um, use her coupon code, 20% off for up to 12 months, you can use MTS20, and uh, that will get you 20% off if you do decide to uh, continue after the free trial. Thank you, everybody, for your time today and for those that are watching this in the recording. And we will see you soon. Thanks, Jake. See you, Have Jake. a great Bye. one. Bye. Bye.